welcome to Culture on I-24 News. I'm Shahab Peled, sitting in for Adet Grober. We have a great show for you today. We'll talk to French actor and comedian Thomas Islay. We'll take a look at a documentary about Jewish Americans discovering religion in Israel. And we'll hear about a famous photographer who covered his subjects in honey. And uh, Thomas Islay is a famous French actor and stand-up comedian. His latest project is a documentary film about Jewish boxer Victor Young Perez, a flyweight champion who was killed in the Holocaust. With me from our studio in France is Thomas Islay. Th thank you, Thomas, very much for joining us. <laughs> thank you for having me. So, uh, Thomas, now you're working on this uh, new, very interesting uh, project. Tell us first, how, you, how, how did you first hear about uh, his story? How did I hear about it? Yes, about Victor Young Perez's very uh, unique story. I, I was offered, um, a, a friend of mine gave me a, a script to read, and it was, uh, and it was something about, about him. And I thought, I thought that his story was so, so passionate, so, I mean, everything is overwhelming that, that I decided uh, that um, it, it was worth to work on it a little bit more and, and start doing some real research and try to find people who knew him, who are still alive, and, and listen to them tell his story. Um, it, it came from, it all started from a script. Well, what, do you, what would you say most fascinated you about uh, his personal life story and what you uh, read and heard about him? Well, listen, the guy, the, he became uh, the world champion uh, in, in, in boxing in 1931. He was the youngest. Until Mike Tyson came uh, 15 years ago, he was still the youngest world champion in boxing. Now, this, this man was a short man, didn't look uh, European at all. You know, he, was, he, was, uh, he, he had black skin, uh, uh, curly hair, he was Jewish, and all this at a time in Paris when uh, uh, having curly hair and, 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 and brown skin like that, that meant that you were a monkey uh, from, from Africa and everybody was uh, allowed to spit on you. And being Jewish, well, you know, uh, anti-Semitism did not, there, there was no such a thing as an idea of what anti-Semitism is. Everybody was anti-Semitic, yes, you know. It, it uh, wasn't uh, uh, so, new or unique, yeah. Right, and, 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 and this guy decided that he was going to box in front of white people, French people, with uh, a, a white short, and on this short, on his, uh, on, on his uh, boxing short, he, uh, he, he put a, a Magen David, a huge Magen David, to show everyone, I'm Jewish. Yes, he was I'm Jewish. very proud. He was, well, it's not only proud, it's, uh, you know, that means that it, it, there's a certain idea of rebellion in mm -hmm. that, of, you know, an idea of not accepting all this. And, and you know, it, it's, it's it not only, he was not only fighting uh, with his fists uh, boxing, he was, o he was also fighting against all these ideas of, right. uh, you know, of, oh, you're, of you come from this and place on the planet, or you're yeah. Jewish, or, so. And, uh, and, and his story is just, it's completely fascinating. Yes, he and was you're, you're working, uh, reported. I'm sorry, but you're working now on a, on a crowdfunding uh, uh, campaign. How is that uh, working um, on this uh, specific project? Well, we're still looking for, uh, we still need money. We need something between 20 and 30,000 euros to finish the documentary. Uh, we're having a, a problem here. Uh, Every time we go to see big channels, TV channels, who are the ones who, who, who usually give the money to finish that kind of documentary, they uh, they tell us, well, it's uh, the, it's very interesting and the, you know it's a nice idea and all that, but we have too many documentaries on World War II and 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 the you know and and all this thing about the Auschwitz and all that. We have already lots of documentaries, so we don't need one more. Um, that's 
that's one of the problems. Okay. We, we, you know, we well, just you're still working one. on it, and uh, still uh, there's still things to look forward to. So there's still time on your uh, campaign. Tom, um, speaking uh, specifically about you and personally about you, um, you were born in Germany. You're a Frenchman, born in Germany to uh, Israeli parents with grandparents from uh, Lithuania and Yemen. You're so very multicultural yourself. Uh, that must do wonders to your identity. I, I'm, I'm sorry for all that. You know, I, I apologize for all that. I, you know, it's, it's their fault. It's my parents' fault. I didn't do anything about that. Well, you shouldn't apologize, but um, how does it make I'm you feel joking, as you I'm work? Joking. Of course. How, how does it make you feel as you work as an actor, as a comedian? Um, does it help you? Do you find your sense of humor with that uh, sense of identity? I tell you what, it helps. It helps when you work internationally. It does not help very much when, when I work in France because I don't feel as French as uh, as someone else, as another French man. You know, when you know, I grew up in France. When I, I came to France, I was nine years old, and from nine years old until today, I still feel that you know. Sometimes people look at me and remind me that I'm not from here, and it's you know it, it's not really that I'm not French, that I'm different. Well, is that so where your classic bit about being uh, both uh, Jewish and Arab came from? That came from no, that came from uh, did that just you know that was a, a stand-up act because I thought it would be funny to say that, and and I thought that it was a nice way of talking about the, you know, all this hatred uh, that many Arabs and Jews have between themselves. And, and uh, it was just an angle, um, a funny angle to talk about. Right, it. well, just that saying, was you know, back I'm then. The product of in, 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 recent, uh, in light of recent events uh, going on in uh, Europe, the rise of anti-Semitism we hear about, um, do you think that sketch would have worked today? I have no idea. Uh, I think um, I well. Yeah. Listen, um, <laughs> when I when I did it, all the all the media, all the TV channels and newspapers and all that, they all came to me and they saw me as as the Messiah. You know, oh, suddenly somebody's coming up and he, you know, he's both, which was not true, and they didn't even care about. You know, they they didn't even do the research to to to, to see if I was joking or if it was true. And they all came to me as if I was suddenly the person who had all the answers to all the problems because, you know, I couldn't obviously uh, prefer one side from the other because I was both, which was, again, not true. Today, I, I, I don't know. You know, I don't know. I don't know what to think. I, was, I, I say many times when people ask me what I think about all, all these things that happen um, is, I have the feeling it's as if I it's, it's as if you wanted me to talk about a, a, a book that I only that I have only read halfway through and I, I still didn't read the end I don't know I, I don't know well, it's not a nice story. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's part of your uh, background and history. And uh, looking forward, uh, I'm, I'm wishing you luck. Thank you very much for this conversation. Well, thank you. Thank you, Shaha. Moving on. Recently, the States of Mind Film Festival took place in Israel. Among the films shown was the documentary Unorthodox, co-directed by Anna Wexler, about young Jewish Americans who come to Israel to spend a year in a local yeshiva and how that time affects them. David Gombin met Wexler and brought back this story. This is Anna Wexler, an American who grew up in a religious Jewish family. Like many other Jewish teenagers, she saw many of her friends going to Israel for a traditional gap year visit and returning completely changed. The average American Jew returns more religious than before departing to the Holy Land. She felt curious and disturbed by the radical changes and therefore made the documentary unorthodox to try to understand the transformations. Um, so basically our idea is this. Um, we're making a documentary film about the year in Israel, so... With her friend Nadja Wertelt, the young Anna Wexler followed three young Americans for one year in a yeshiva religious school in Jerusalem. They chose their subjects carefully. We started interviewing kids, so we had to find, like, 
a very select group of kids. So we had to find people who were questioning the faith. So people who might change. Like, so most of the people who go to spend the year in Israel, they're not questioning. Tzipi, Haim, and Jake are the three main characters of the film. Each one of them has agreed to be filmed before, during, and after this decisive year. It wasn't an easy choice. Tzipi, for example, feared the reactions of those around her. I was most nervous about her, of course, because her change was so dramatic. And who she is now is so different from who she was back then. And she married a very religious guy. And so she was really nervous about her in-laws, about her husband's family and how they would see the film. The thing is, she now works with kids who are rebellious. So she works with rebellious Orthodox Jewish teenagers who are just like her. And then she kind of tries to teach them or, or help them or show them the way. Wexler's interest in the subject stems from her own biography. It echoes her personal experience, but in the other direction. Anna was raised in a religious family. She went from being religious in her youth to becoming completely secular. She chose to narrate the documentary in the first person. I only visit my family occasionally, and when I do, it's always uncomfortable. Yeah, we shot the film without me in it at all. And the whole time I was telling my co-director, Nadia, that this wasn't my story. I'm following these three kids. I really want to see what happens during this year. Why are people changing? That's the story. And I held on to that for years. I mean, that was what I was telling her. You know, it's not about me. It's not about me. And other people also would come in and they'd be like, you know, this film is about you. Maybe you should shoot some of your family. And I'd be like, no, it's not about me at all. Um, and only in the editing, so about 2007, 2008, so say three or four years after we finished, three or four years after we started shooting and we're putting everything together, only then did I look at it and see, okay, it's probably more interesting if you see it from a personal story. Released in 2013, Unorthodox began back in 2004. The project helped Wexler and her family come to terms with each other. I'm not angry anymore. I'm spending time with my grandparents and with my family and things are better. You know, I'm still kind of the black sheep in the family, but, but we both, my family and, and me, we've sort of come to accept each other. In a moment, we'll hear about a portrait photographer playing with honey. But first, here's our cultural recommendations of the day. Seventy-seven-year-old artist David Bailey is considered a 60s icon and one of the world's most famous celebrity photographers. Known for his intimate portraits of stars such as Kate Moss, Jack Nicholson, and Mick Jagger, his Stardust exhibition has now arrived in Milan at the prestigious exhibition space the Paglione of Contemporary Arts. Over 300 photographs convey the range of Bailey's work, covering everything from glamorous portraits of movie icons to reportage from India and Papua New Guinea. Famous people are mixed in among anonymous faces from East London and characters encountered during Bailey's globetrotting adventures. For aspiring photographers, Bailey offers this piece of good advice, always wear comfortable shoes. And we are now joined in the studio by I24 News' Mika Gorovic. Mika, thank you for joining us. What do you have for us today? Hi, Shacha. So today I would like to introduce to our viewers for a uh, uh, very special photographer called Blake Little. Little was uh, born and raised in Seattle, Washington. He graduated from uh, the Seattle Central uh, College with a photography degree. Um, he moved to LA at uh, around the 1980s and very fast became part of the vibrant LA art scene. Um, he's especially known for um, intimately capturing the uh, energy and uh, personality of his subjects. And he became one of the favorite photographers. Yeah, very impressive subjects we yes, can see. Yes, yes, very famous ones. Um, in 2013, he has won um, the second place of the nude category of the International Photo Awards of his project um, Preservation. In this project, he took uh, oh his subjects to the studio and covered them with sticky sweet honey. Same honey you and I have in our kitchen. Yes, I can say, but how much honey do you need to coat an entire person? Well, he used about 905 pound jugs for this project. <sighs> um, 
a lot of honey, as you can see. And what I think is trying to say to us through this project is that it doesn't really matter um, if you're a one-year-old baby, an 85-year-old woman, a dog or a bird, we're all the same, we're all equals, we are all um, creatures of the same universe. And, uh, you know, the amber has this kind of way of uh, preserving the, like, organisms for more than 200 million years. Yes, the and very color we can see. And there's a new book uh, coming up? Yes, there is. Uh, the Book of Preservation Project uh, just was just published uh, last Saturday, and the exhibition is going to be running at uh, the Copican uh, Gallery in Los Angeles from March 8th until uh, April 17th. Well... Mika, thank you very much uh, for this. That is it from us uh, for today. Uh, you can check out our past shows on our website, i24news.tv, and also connect with us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>